Thank you very much for joining me. Before I open it up to questions, I'd like to say a few words about my administration's efforts to help residents cope with increased water bills. Beginning this month, my administration will increase the water bill assistance for low-income residents and for our seniors. Assistance available to low-income residents will increase by 11 percent. Uh, for these families, the means, uh, this means an annual savings of more than $160. Uh, far outpacing the typical water bill increase of $80 per the average family of four. At the same time, we're increasing the uh, water bill discounts for low-income seniors. Seniors will see discounts uh, increase from 35% to 39% off each quarterly bill. The additional financial assistance is designed to offset the increased water and sewer rates uh, for our uh, most vulnerable families in the city. Uh, it's, it is necessary, um, which were the, the rates were, uh, the rate increases were necessary to expedite infrastructure improvements to Baltimore's aging pipes. And the Board of Estimates adopted a three-year plan last year to provide additional revenue for infrastructure uh, repairs. It is so uh, very important that we keep pace with the infrastructure needs in the city. Uh, we see uh, in, in Baltimore, we've, we've seen an increase in uh, water main breaks, and we know with an aging city uh, what that what that means uh, when we are not keeping pace with it. And we're certainly aware uh, that it is uh, very important to maintain the uh, to meet the the federal requirements. So um, it is my goal to continue uh, to keep pace with the, the our infrastructure needs and to plan for the future. While infrastructure is critically important to Baltimore's future, we must also be very very mindful of the financial uh, burdens many residents are facing. And that's something I talk about locally, but also something I advocate for nationally in my role as co-chair of the U.S. Conference of Mayors Water Council. We have been bringing the issue of affordability to the discussion of EPA requirements um, nationwide. We were having this conversation. Uh, we know we can't kick the can down the road when it comes to tackling tough problems in our city, but I also recognize that uh, change can't come at the expense of our most vulnerable residents. We have to strike a balance between making progress on the challenges that we face and helping families and seniors who are most in need. I speak often about my goal of growing the city by 10,000 families over the next decade. I, I know that in order to grow, it's not just a, the, a, um, a question of how many new residents can you get. A growth plan that doesn't uh, also include retention uh, isn't a growth plan. So a lot of uh, what we do is um, work to give uh, those residents already here more reasons to stay. And my administration has been aggressive in responsibly finding ways to help residents who are uh, struggling with increased fees, uh, while at the same time uh, in we're reducing our property taxes. We've achieved this uh, the most significant property tax reduction of any administration in recent uh, memory, and we are on pace to continue uh, to uh, grow those reductions in the coming years. Residents have been clear that they want to see action taken to reduce their property taxes, and as, as well as ease the burdens from other fees that have increased in recent years to respond to the Great Recession. We are listening, and more importantly, we're taking action that will lay the groundwork for future growth in Baltimore City. Now I would like to have uh, Kumasi Vines, Acting Bureau Head of Water and Wastewater DPW, come up and say a few words about who can qualify for this program. Kumasi. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, so as you know, this is the beginning of the fiscal year 2015 and the second step of the three-step uh, rate adjustment that the Mayor spoke of. Um, and I just want to talk about two programs right now to um, help assist uh, some of the people that are least able to, to find the money to pay for uh, their, their, their bills. And the first one is the Low Income Senior Citizen Water Discount Program. This program is for people 65 and over, and they will see a 39% discount on their water and sewer rates uh, each quarter. And that is 35, that's an increase from 35% uh, 35, 35 that it's currently at, um, and also an increase from the 30% it was just a year ago. Um, and residents who apply and qualify for the low income 
Water Assistance Program, they're going to see an annual credit of $161, and that's up from the $145 that it's currently at, and the previous year the credit was for $125. Um, if there are any of our citizens that have any questions or concerns about if they qualify or to apply for these uh, discount programs, uh, information and applications can be provided by our by DPW's Department of Public Works Customer Service, Customer Support and Services Division, and they can explain all the details that it goes into applying for those programs. Um, they can be reached at 410-396-5398, and again, that's for information on qualifications for these programs. And just to repeat, that's Department of Public Works Customer Support and Services Division at 410 396 5398. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I will open up to questions. How much will it cost the city to provide these um, increased discounts on water? I can give you a total number. I don't have that yeah. right now. Um, Mayor, there was a, some, the homicide rate is turning down. Mm -hmm. Do you think that this is, um, I mean, it's done, we've had this before. Is this, do you think this is more substantive? And what do you think is factoring into this? There are a lot of factors uh, that contribute to the reduction in the homicide rate that we're seeing. It's a significant reduction and uh, I think it's a, a combination of things including our uh, dedication to working better with our community. Uh, when uh, we you know, extend our hand, if the community is not willing to extend theirs back, we know that we can't have the type of safe communities that we want to see. So we have to do uh, the legwork, and I've been really pleased with the conversation we've been having during the public safety forums that I've attended with Commissioner Batts. Um, I know the only way to be a dramatically safer city is through partnership with the communities who want to be safer as well. I, I've talked about it in here before when I was interviewing, uh, prior to interviewing for the commissioner, I met with community leaders from all throughout the city. I think it was about 30 different uh, community members. And uh, to a person, no matter what type of community they came from, they said that they wanted to find ways to be better partners. And we've been striving to do that. And I think we are seeing the fruits of that labor. We're also, as I talked about in the state of this, uh, my state of the city address this year, expanding the enforcement zones. We've also introduced Operation Ceasefire. So we've seen progress, but there's still a lot of work to do. We're not taking our foot off the gas. We uh, remain committed, and I remain personally committed to working every single day to make Baltimore safer for every uh, community in our city. Madam Mayor, go ahead. Do you, do you um, I mean, well, how do you date again? Do you ask, do you, are you on a, an email that says this is what our overnights look like? I mean, how engaged are you with the day-to-day -day uh, violence? It is something that is on my mind all day. I get notif notification uh, 24 hours a day about uh, violent crime in the city, and I follow up on the, the information 24 hours a day. Um, my staff knows that I don't particularly sleep very well, so they'll get messages all times of the night, and uh, most of the, well, I shouldn't say most of the time, sometimes they'll have an occasional in, uh, night of insomnia, and I'll get a response in the middle of the, of the night as well, but. Do you ever call over there and say to the commissioner or Debbie whomever and say, what was that about? Oh, all the time. Uh, particularly when I know it's happening in one of our enforcement zones. Um, when we set up the enforcement zones, it was to reduce violence, and I want to know when we have incidents, particularly in those zones, um, that you know, if, we, if we can reduce violence in those zones, we will significantly reduce overall violence in the city. So when we don't get it right, I want them to ask the questions that I'm asking, which is, what happened? You know, how did this, with you know, all of the things that we have in place, how did this happen? So yes, very, very engaged, asking the questions every day, all day. Madam Mayor, I don't know if you heard, but in the last few minutes, uh, former Prince George's County Executive Wayne Curry had passed. Yeah. No. Um, I know this, I'm basically putting you on this left, but uh, if you had any words. Uh, I saw uh, recently uh, he announced that he was very ill. Um, and I know that he had, as a, as he admitted as a longtime smoker, he's uh, suffered uh, with lung cancer, and it's, it is devastating, you know, when you think about uh, someone who had so much to offer to the community, and 
you know, not to be able to kick that habit and, you know, for that to uh, spiral into, um, you know, the, the lung cancer and for him to lose his life because of it. Um, it's, uh, I'm certainly uh, saddened to hear the news and um, you know, pray for his family. It's, it is, even when you know it's coming, uh, it's, it's never a good time. It's never, I, you know, I, I don't know many people that, you know, even when they know it's coming with a family member, it, it's okay. It's still a very sad experience, especially when a person has so much to offer. Um, I remember we've asked this before. We've asked a lot. Of when is your administration going to release the 26 three documents in terms of the engineering stuff that we've asked for? Because uh, we haven't seen it yet. So I know we've asked this before. So yeah, that's... and I wish I had an update for you. I don't have an update. I know that we're working on it. I also know that we're working on uh, the settlement with, uh, you know, we're in conversations, uh, aggressive conversations with the CSX about uh, the settlement. So. You know, I would like to give you a, a exact time, but I don't have that for you today. I know that we're definitely working on getting that information out. Can we get back to the violence issue, mm -hmm. uh, since we're at the halfway point? Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have administration after administration, obviously, have covered this issue and have asked the same questions, and it, there's a certain amount of blah, 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 it sounds like. Mm -hmm. you know, okay, what, is there really something different now with this administration and the police department with this focus on trying to, what I call repairing the relationship. Well, you know, I, I think that's that's for, I mean, that, that's for history to to answer and for the community to answer. It's not, you know, I, I say it when I have my meetings. You don't ask, just like my counsel, my colleague on the council, Ricky Spector, says, you don't ask the doctor if the patient if the medicine is working. You ask the patient, and that's what I want to do with these with our uh, our forums. I'm asking the question: Are we doing this right? Uh, how can we work better together? And after having those conversations and working very hard to repair those relationships, we're seeing positive progress. And I continue, and I, my commitment is to continue on that path. There is no way for us to be safe, a safer city, to reduce violence without being in partnership with the communities that are impacted the most. And that is why I committed to being uh, in conversation. I committed to working very hard, uh, choosing a commissioner that believed in um, the, the power of the community to help make a city safer. And you know, we are, we are seeing positive progress. And for me, that's a sign that we are headed in the right direction. I, I know that um, you know, we've made, under my administration, we've made uh, progress reducing violence uh, in the past. I'm looking for a sustainable change, and I'm looking for a dramatic change. I know that Baltimore can be a much safer city, and I will not relent in trying to find ways to get us there. City Council uh, held a hearing last week on Tyrone West, mm -hmm. and one of the issues that was raised was how much teeth the Civilian Review Board has mm -hmm. uh, to the point that it's routine. The Civilian Review Board times in the police department uh, doesn't really take their uh, finding to the account for the for the police investigation. Mm -hmm. uh, where do you stand on it giving the civilian review for a little bit bigger role in the process? So that is something that I'm I've asked my senior team to look at. I think in order for us to be consistent across the board when we're talking about. Um, civic engagement, we have to make sure that the ways in which we touch the public are empowered. Uh, so we, I am taking a look at the Civilian Review Board and how they can be a more impactful um, partner in uh, helping us to create a safer Baltimore. So I don't have an answer on what, uh, what if any changes there will be, but that's definitely something I'm looking at. Um, I know that the Community Relations Councils have been extremely helpful. Um, and I've leaned on them in the process of having the public forums uh, and as leaders in the community when it comes to public safety they've really stepped up and I'm looking for ways to engage with them more. Um, I know that the um, you know the police commissioner and the fire commissioner have reached out to the community when they're interviewing for promotions and have had community members sit on um, promotion panels and um, this is the first time I've, I've heard of that. Maybe it was happening before and I didn't hear about it, but this is the first time I've heard about community members taking that much of an active role in what the departments look like, the fire department and the police department. So we're going to continue to do the, that type of work. In terms of the message, 
you're trying to get across with the partnership with communities, um, I mean, the backdrop of that are these incidents, not a lot of them, but you know, we have the incident that obviously has caused an awful lot of concern about the officers who responded to the blue stall. Mm -hmm. um, and now that's resulted in a pretty serious charge against mm -hmm. them. But um, what, this, what message are the police officers getting in terms of their interaction with the community that might be different than what it was before because obviously this is exactly what you're trying to counter I believe. So the message that that I send and the message that I know Commissioner Batts sends is that we want you to treat every member of the public that you engage the same way that you would want someone to treat your family and um, we've seen a reduction and I, and I know that you even uh, mentioned it in your question, a reduction in police discourtesy and the other uh, types of complaints that um, we had seen um, spike in years past. Even when we had reductions, we had these uh, discourtesy complaints and other complaints about um, excessive use of force. My goal is to, uh, to target the most violent offenders in, in a way that helps us build um, trust uh, with our community partners. You can do that when you have what we have now, which is a, a significant reduction in violence. At the same time, we're seeing an increase in the amount of information coming from uh, the, the community, as well as a decrease in the discourtesy um, complaint. So what you, you, you're asking the question, what are they hearing? Um, I'm, my answer to that is, what are they doing? And what they're doing is treating, uh, working to treat the community in a more fair and humane way as partners. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice holiday. Thanks, you too. Thanks. Thank you.